The fifth point that Carl Sagan raises is his concern regarding the belief systems at the fringe or border of science um, that are not subject to experimentation like science. The practitioners of um, modern belief systems cannot experiment with, with those beliefs. They just follow whatever is told to them. And uh, mostly it is just anecdotal. Uh, there is no eyewitness and even if there is an eyewitness, its validity can be questioned. It's something like, uh, you know, the story that we learned uh, during the primary classes at school about the rabbit uh, which mistook the falling of a nut for the falling of the sky itself and how it turned out to be wrong in the end, but in the Meanwhile, it uh, she, the rabbit misled many other animals. So it's just like that, uh, you know. All these systems, uh, sometimes they might turn out to be invalid. But at the same time, the science is broad enough uh, because it doesn't reject these belief systems outright. It is just that it is refuses to accept them into the realm of science or consider it as scientific unless it can produce enough proofs because this science has already done in the past and he explains this so this is called as the dilemma of science because it cannot either accept anecdotal evidence or reject it so there was this belief system which was rejected by 18th century scientists regarding falling of large rocks from skies which was later proved as meteorites, uh, uh, the parts of stone are uh, made of rock mostly, which fall onto Earth's surface. And this is the image. In the image uh, here, you can see a big meteorite, uh, which has uh, caused so much of um, um, impact on the Earth's surface. And these are really very, very costly, many, many times costly, even a piece of it than even gold. So uh, they are now acceptable. But science accepted it only on the basis of careful analysis of witnesses and after e only after collecting enough physical evidence like the specimen of these uh, meteorites recovered from many places. So only then science can accept something. And the sixth point that he suggests, another very important point that uh, we already saw earlier in the earlier slide, that is um, science through these examples, we can conclude that science can be called post-judice and not prejudiced. Prejudice, as we know, is something negative, which means biased, having a wrong opinion based on some narrow considerations. But so that is the term itself, as you see, pre. Pre means before. Before forming, uh, getting evidence, so some we, when we form uh, an opinion about something, it's called prejudice because it will not be most of the time it will it might be wrong. Because it's not based on evidence. Whereas science concludes something only on the basis of post judice. So uh, only after post means after careful examination, science accepts something. And that is, that is post judice is something that is essential as far as knowledge is concerned. Because we cannot take risk as far as knowledge is concerned. Once something is accepted as knowledge, it should be valid. We cannot take the risk of that thing being invalid. So that is why it has to ensure validity. That is a prerequisite for knowledge. Please do remember this. This is very important. The seventh important point that Carl Sagan brings through this article is with regard to the reality of truth. That is... In order to reveal truth, what is needed is skeptical observation and discussion. Wherever these are suppressed, wherever skeptical observation and discussion are put under the carpet, truth will also remain hidden. So if truth has to come out, you have to be skeptical, question-minded, observing everything around us and discussing our ideas with knowledgeable people. Only then truth will 
come out. Otherwise, if we just follow blindly what others say, we'll only be prey to other people's fancies. So that is one important point he suggests and he uh, in order to further illustrate this point, he uh, brings in the example of how we do all this when it comes to simple things like buying a car or uh, other things. Uh, we, we we think so much. We are very careful, right? But um, And he also questions the borderline um, practitioners who are offended when they are questioned. So obviously science has this um, quality in it. It always questions everything. But uh, borderline uh, people always uh, don't like such kind of questioning. They don't want others to question their system. Whereas science is ready to ready and open for questioning. Even scientists do that. They question science and they in, in order to ensure that whatever is accepted is valid. But uh, this is one thing he uh, detests with regard to borderline belief system. And he explains with example of uh, the magician Yuri Geller, uh, who's happy to uh, showcase his skills in front of scientists who are actually uh, knowledgeable and all these things and who know the science behind whatever mag magicians do. Uh, so that uh, he that is how he explains that point again how uh, borderline belief systems uh, and then there is this argument by the borderline belief systems whenever they are questioned they say that okay now science questions us but uh, see what science has done in the past what some they will just cite one or two examples where science was proved wrong mostly it might be in the case of columbus when he said earth was uh, round scientists laughed at him right so that is what they say usually borderline belief systems but Carl Sagan points out here that the that those are just exceptions. There have been, I mean, one or two theories science might have had to accept which it rejected in the past. But more than that, there are also theories which science rejected in the past still continue to be, uh, or which have been proved to be uh, not true in uh, afterwards. So there are both sides are there which we have to consider so that is the sixth point and seventh point which is the most important point that he raises so this since we've identified that pseudoscience or science is something that can be dangerous now we need to find a cure for it an antidote for it and that is obviously according to Carl Sagan science and he gives us a lot of example to prove how even science can be quite interesting many examples are there he gives the example of an african freshwater fish a blind fish which can produce uh, electric field to recognize its predators and prey um, then he brings example from arithmetics um, to prove how two times two in one into one that is two times one would not equal one times two that is um, two in two one one into one is not equal to two into one so the, the these are uh, those are theories which are complete in themselves you know we cannot explain it out of the context then he gives the example of pigeons and many more examples he gives to prove this point how science can also be very very interesting if one is really interested in it the ninth point, the last point with which Sagan concludes the chapter is uh, very important because this is where the title of this article becomes uh, clear to us. That is, night walkers, magicians, priests of Bacchus, priestesses of the wine vat, mystery mongers. All these are names given to practitioners of pseudoscience or false science by the name. These names were coined by the Ionian philosopher Heraclitus and that too as early as 5th century BC. So at that time, so ancient time itself, these um, people were recognized uh, as uh, being false. 
so that is why they call this night walkers mystery mongers you know people who just as as we mentioned earlier who just believe things without checking whether uh, without checking their validity so that is why they call this mystery people who just swallow things as they are given to them without a skeptic mind an observational mind or uh, discussing so that is why he has uh, titled this article thus and um, so throughout this article he has been um, bringing the sense that is meaningful and nonsense absurd part meaningless part uh, with regard to this borderline belief system so there have been good things there and also bad things whatever has been proved right like the um, falling dropping of the large rocks meteorites and all have been ac accepted by science but others are still in the borderline so it is our responsibility to recognize uh, which is true and which is false and that is why um, finally sagan concludes by explaining the significance of science because science as he says is more intricate more deep it's not easy and it's very subtle uh, you know there are some minute things that make all the difference and uh, it is through science that we understand a lot about this universe around us it has revealed uh, and it has given us so many possibilities and um, always it will create a sense of wonder in each and every one so again he concludes by giving the most important virtue of science what makes science important is this its virtue its quality what is the quality of science it is the quality of being true thank you for your patient listening